Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. Before anything else, I would like to thank you for following along and for subscribing to my channel. And if you happen not to, go ahead and hit that button. So today's video, I'm going to be talking about some plants that are still growing after the thrips issue I had. And I'm going to be sharing with you what you can do to keep them alive and when is the best time to transition them into any of your chosen medium. So, let's dive in! So if you are following my plant journey, you know that I had the worst insects in my plants and I've struggled a lot getting rid of them. And if you want to know how I got rid of them, go ahead and click the link on top and it will lead you to that video. And you guys, when I started collecting plants, I bought a lot of rare anthurms and philodendrons, which I have no clue how they got infected. And I've struggled a lot, like you said, to the point that I had to throw most of them because it keeps getting infected with the plants that I have. And you guys, I've tried everything I could, but the only way that I can get rid of them is to throw them which is unfortunate but i managed to save quite of them using the uh, stem cutting which i'm going to be talking with you the two anthurms that i saved and one philodendron so without further ado let's start with my rugulosum so you guys i have my anthurium rugulosum in here and before anything else i'm going to show you the picture from before and after so you guys have a clue on what this looks like and you guys this anthurium rugulosum is very stunning and of course it is native to ecuador and you guys the look captivates me because of the texture and if you want to have this plant to stay healthy you have to make sure to place this plant into a cool area not too cold but it's in a cool area with lots of moist and good humidity. And so for this one, I managed to save a little bit of stem like this. And uh, it happened that I had some of, you know, remaining sphagnum moss from the totem that I made in perlite. So I decided to place it in here. It's been here for quite some time. And you guys, it's still growing. I'm gonna share with you how it looks like. So that's how it looks like, guys. And what you are seeing in here, this is alga. Don't worry about that. That won't harm the plant. And I just don't know when am I going to get this out from this glass. I am growing this one with tons of perlites and a little bit of cocoa core. And sphagnum moss so you guys I've been keeping this anthurium rugulosum in here I call this one my little terrarium which it's not a terrarium obviously but I just got this one from Ikea and it has a good lid on top if you have an anthurium stem that is struggling you can always place it in this kind of glass or any glass that has lid on it because it produces good humidity inside and that's the source of water which helps the plant to grow so highly recommend I think I got this one for a cheap price I'm not quite sure how much but I'm gonna link the name of the glass and how much it is I think not even five dollars so if you have a stem cutting like I said any type of stem cuttings for your plants just throw it in here and just keep it sealed don't open it leave it but do not place this one direct sunlight because like i said most of the interims don't like direct sunlight they're very sensitive so just leave them in a you know bright area and you can also place this one in your bathroom which is pretty good because it will keep producing good roots and of course leaves so let's go for the next one so this one over here is my 
water cannon. This is my Anthurium water cannon. You heard me. I've had two water cannon. I have the light form, which I bought it from Indonesia, and the dark form. I think this is the dark form, which I got it from Ecuador. And sad to say, because of the thrips issue, unfortunately, I wasn't able to save them both. But for the dark form, I managed to, you know, cut a little bit of stem. And then, like what I did to the other one, I threw it in here and waited if it's gonna work, which it did. So you guys, this glass is a lifesaver for the plant because... I have a new growth. This is the one. And this is the first leaf. And that's the new one. And also I have my... I believe this is my Philodendron Nungaritans. Which, you know, it's still growing. After the thrips issue I had. Which is very sucks and very unfortunate. So, Warcanum is what we call the queen of anthurium and if you have this plant it is very beautiful and the best way to i think the best way to keep this alive is to place them in a sphagnum moss and good humidity always moisten it because they don't want to be in a dry places or dry area and also I am keeping or I'm growing this plant in, of course, my perlite and a little bit of coco core and a sphagnum moss. So like what I did on the first one, never open it, just keep it like this. And that's why you're seeing the aga is, you know, showing some green color. But like I said, don't worry, it won't harm the plant. And if you want to get rid of that color, just simply spray hydrogen peroxide and it will, you know, disinfect or get rid of that discoloration on the perlite, which it works. So the last one that I have, I've been keeping this plant in, again, my small terrarium I called. And this is my philodendron varicosum. And you guys, when it arrived, it has a beautiful leaves and especially at the back of the leaf, it has a very prominent red color. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I did not save it. Like I was not able to save that plant, but I was able to save a little bit of stem again. So I'm gonna show you. This is my, whoop, let me just open this all. So this one, I got it from Ikea as well. And maybe you can see the name of it. So that's the name of this uh, glass. It's like the one that they use in um, Beauty and the Beast for the flower. So let me just take this out from here. Okay, so like I said, I managed to save a little bit of stem of this one and I've been growing this plant here in my cocoa core and you guys it produces a lot of leaves but they're small and the roots are crazy but they're tiny so I have two in here one almost uh, two four six seven leaves and you guys I'm gonna show you the back of the leaf you guys see that color? See that um, red color at the back? And that's very beautiful when it gets bigger and you know. The roots, you guys can tell, the roots are everywhere. Which, um, like I said, I am keeping this one or growing this one in the uh, cocoa core that I have. You see this plant, or if you happen to have this plant, you know that this plant is massive and this is very beautiful. Like I hope one day I'll be able to get uh, a bigger size or maybe if I transition this one into the outside world 
then it will produce a bigger leaf and produce a lot of roots but for now I'm keeping it in here so yeah this is my philodendron varicosum in red form I'm not sure if it's in the red form I'm not quite sure exactly what's the name I think it's the philodendron red congo or philodendron varicosum correct me if I'm wrong because some of the plants are very similar like I don't even know which which one and whatnot so let me just put this down so there you go guys these are the things you have to remember when transitioning these plants into the outside world make sure to have a good support of roots and leaves at least three to four and make sure to mimic their places that they are in the glass so you don't have to worry about you know getting them die right away if you place it in a pot and thank you again for watching thanks for listening i hope you guys learned something and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up i appreciate it a lot and if you want to follow me on my instagram follow me on a girl's and don't forget to subscribe until then i'll see you on my next video bye